How are we said deer bologna? Right? Is that what you yeah, deer bologna and deer deer snack sticks. Deer snack sticks, deer bologna, and uh, humanely harvested, grass fed locally, locally, right, here, right across yeah. the parking lot. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sustainably, Sust sustainably, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about that. Recyclable. He drove over here in Bill's Tesla, mm. so no carbon emissions whatsoever. Yeah, uh, Tim Zaya also joining us too, gentlemen. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Bill and I on Friday, and by Bill I mean Stubblefield, were uh, discussing the West Virginia First Foundation and the responsibilities and job descriptions for both of you as uh, you're involved and we begin to distribute this money from the uh, opioid settlements here. Bill, uh, why don't you go ahead first with the question of the delineation of duties and responsibilities? Yeah, uh, part of this after our discussion, we, Rob and I realized there's a lot about West Virginia First that we did not know. We've heard people talk to us about it but there's still a lot of questions one of which both of you gentlemen play an active role uh in in and is and what's the delineation between the two one of you does what the other one does what tim why don't you go first sure well we're, we're both uh part of an 11 member board um i am one of the regional uh, uh elected i'm not sure what the term is there are there are six folks who are elected per dhhr region uh, I was elected in Region 2. And who voted you in, Tim? Uh, the counties and municipalities represented in, in Region 2, which may, uh, which is eight counties in the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. So the county commissioners? County commissioners, uh, mayors, uh, or their appointee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, and then there are five uh, members of the board who were, who were appointed by the governor, and Matt is one of those uh, governor appointees. And Matt? You were also the chairman of the foundation. Yes. And that was voted upon by other members of the board on the foundation. Correct. So Correct. Tim, Tim, for instance, would have had a vote. Yes, he did, and he voted for me. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. Yeah. Now, now that you're both on the board, you were appointed a different way. Uh, are your duties similar? I know you're chairman and you're a board member, but do you have different, uh, different things you're responsible for? Matt certainly has his additional responsibilities as chair. Um, uh, I, as time goes on, uh, committees will be developed and established, and I assume I'll be a part of, uh, nice. of a committee. Uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a, a much slower process I, than I would prefer. <laughs> there's, but, a, there's a little more to it uh, spelled out in the memorandum, memorandum of understanding as well, is that the, the regional selections – have a, are there to look out for the of the interest of the county and the municipalities okay. in their region. Okay. So they kind of answer to them in a sense because they're selected by those entities. Uh, the governor appointees are to represent the, in the best interest of the state. Okay. This is not the first time we've had a lot of money. The state's going to have to make wise decisions of the distribution. Uh, we had the uh, the alcohol, uh, the, uh, the tobacco settlement a few years ago. We had a lot of COVID money come in. Now, I realize COVID was somewhat different, but nevertheless, there was a, uh, a massive amount of money uh, uh, put into the state. Uh, we've looked back on the tobacco settlement and there's been some criticism and yet there's similarities what you folks are facing. Uh, and I'm confident there's a lot of pressure on you now to get the money out fairly quick for see things happen. Uh, what And we hear the word guardrails all the time. Uh, is it is the settlement does this settlement establish the guardrails which you have to work within, or is this something you and your board are going to determine what the guardrails are? Well, the and and one other question before I ask you to answer it, Matt, is I understand 75% uh, of the money is for you, for your board, for direct distribution. The other 25% goes to the county for their distribution. So all these so, are sort of questions I don't know the answer well, to. Well, and, and I can answer them. Uh, it's, it's some of, of everything that you pointed out about the direction. Like we, the spirit and the underlying philosophy was spelled out in the memorandum understanding. Now think, and this was agreed to by all the counties and the municipalities, like 99.6% agreed to this settlement. So it's, I, I will push back and say that we're not, the, we're not here to distribute the money as fast as possible as a charitable foundation. The purpose that they chose to create this structure is to make sure that the money endures. So we, we don't follow the same mistakes as this, 
the tobacco settlements, the ARPA funds, whatever other thing that you can think of when a large amount of money. So this is to be enduring. Now, that doesn't mean we set on it. We don't spend any of it. Obviously, we will absolutely spend it uh, in appropriate ways, evidence-based programs. Um, other There's other criteria that are similar. But now, the 24.5% that goes directly to the municipalities and counties, and they're going to receive a portion of that this year, the, their first $73.5 million is split up pursuant to the, the ratio, um, they have a lot more flexibility. And they, you know, they can spend it however they want. We have no control. We're, we're in a support. Uh, we'll support them. You know, hope they do well with it. Uh, but we have no direct say or, or oversight of that money. And, you know, I, I, I would hope that they would be cautious and not just have a burn a hole in their pocket and they get it out the door immediately. They should look to partner with other municipalities or counties, um, you know, do a needs assessment in their in their area to see where the money can best be spent and things like that. But that's obviously up to them. Yeah, I, I think I use the term to be pressure on you to distribute. I did not say that you folks would ex expedite the uh, the distribution, but there will be pressure. Sure. Uh, for the counties themselves, the counties slash municipalities, uh, what is the formula that will determine how much a respective county or municipality will receive? Is it all formally driven, or are they evaluated on a county by county basis, or what? The direct money? Yes. Uh huh. That was already predetermined in okay. the settlement, and so I forget. Population based. It's population, population based, based, but okay. I think it also yeah. had something to do with the amount of prescriptions that were written in a particular jurisdiction. There was, there's. Stephen Skinner, who, who represented Jefferson County yeah. and Berkeley County, he would know that answer. He would know okay. the an yeah. answer a little better than I would. Okay, so going back to to the 70, uh, 75 percent that uh, the seventy two and a half, seventy two and a half percent. Yes, sir. Well, then the math doesn't add up. You said twenty six, and then no, I said twenty four and a half goes direct to the counties. Three percent goes to the attorney general for future three percent to the attorney future general. litigation okay. fees, and then seventy two and a half goes to the foundation. Okay. Now, of the uh, of the foundation, uh, seventy two and a half, uh, are you given guidelines of how this money is to be distributed, or is this something you, as your your foundation, will determine yourself? Yes. Yes. We <laughs> It will, it will be more than just cutting a check and sending it out. It could, it could fund research. It could fund uh, new innovations in, in recovery or treatment or enforcement. Um, it doesn't have to specifically go back to a locality. Yeah, but I guess what you're saying, what I am understanding anyway, is that the purview of how this distribution is is done is up to you and your foundation is that correct there's some there's some guidance in the mou about okay. how we should distribute plus there's in addition to that there's some irs uh requirements because it's a charitable foundation you can't just set on money you have to spend a percentage of it every year to to keep that yeah. that you know qualification but I, I think in very broad terms, I can think of three or four categories. You mentioned research. One would be treatment. One would be prevention. One would be enforcement. So this kind of category. But you have the latitude in large part, do you, of, of in these broad categories how the money will be divided? Well, I think we're missing a, we're, we haven't spoken about something that I think is tremendously important is there's going to be a, an expert panel that we're going to appoint and we haven't done that yet and these are the subject matter experts that are right on the ground and have just a tremendous amount of expertise and experience and knowledge about these particular very you know i use these terms prevention enforcement treatment as as wide as possible uh everything's on the table but we will look to put together a tremendous uh and geographically diverse expert panel and we're still talking about how, how that's going to look, but we're all Matt, on board. Can you can you tell us what type of job descriptions might get you on that panel, or job titles? <clears throat> well, um, somebody, Tim. I mean, what do you? Here's my role. One one thing that I see is very important for my role as the chairman is we have these regional reps that have to go back and answer to the counties and the municipalities. So I see my role is to make give them the tools that they need. 
Mm -hmm. And so I want them to have the best expert panel that they can have to work with the regional reps on the board. And um, I don't think that there's, you know, it, uh, Tim, do, do you have any thoughts on that? There's, there's, there, there's a lot of work that has to be done yeah. before we get to a place where, where the foundation money is going to be distributed. The 20, 24.5% that's directly being paid to the municipalities and counties, we're told, um, will be paid by the end of this, this calendar year, so within the month. Um, and that's going to be pretty important, I think. Uh, the foundation money, um, there's there's a lot of things that have to happen before we get to a place where that money is going to be able to be distributed in any way. Uh, quite a bit of that money is going to be invested for, for long-term returns so that it's it can be sustained for many, many years. Um, it's about a million dollars a month in interest right now. Yeah. An executive director has to be hired. The executive director is then going to be responsible for finding office space somewhere in the state maybe Charleston, maybe the Eastern Panhandle, maybe the Northern Panhandle, we don't know. Uh, the executive director will have to hire some staff. Uh, computers need to be purchased and, and copy machines need to be purchased and that's gonna take a little bit of time. Our Grant RFPs just went out for banking, CPA and investment services and those have are closing in 45 days from, so there's about, I would say, uh, almost 40 days left on that. Yeah. And that's, that's first step foundational yeah. items that we need to get in place shored up before any sort of talk about distributing money as and, well. And, an expert panel that's put together, I assume, would be would consist of, of people who have worked in the field in some capacity at different parts of the state. May, there, there may be an expert panel per region. There may be one for the state. What, those are conversations that need to be had. And I, and I realize that we're we're getting to you very very early in the process, and I realize that all the questions that you'll raise have not been answered. But I think it's refreshing to get some thought of where you are right now. Mm -hmm. This expert panel, and I I come from an organization uh, one time in my career that that lived on expert panels, and I can see the value of them. Uh, is there dollars in your operating fund to have standing expert panels or the, or the be ad hoc expert panels? I think those are conversations that, that need, you to, be need to be had. Yep. Fair enough, fair yep. enough, okay. Uh, so Tim, in, in your role as the, um, I guess, elected representative from the, the representing the eight panhandle counties do you have a say in how the berkeley county money and the morgan county money the 24 and a half percent right is is that in your purview to be involved with how that's spent or are you strictly on the other 70 i get lost in the math correct. Right? The, mo the money that's distributed directly to the counties and municipalities um is theirs and i have no say so over how they use it it's to be used, as outlined in the MOU, prevention, evidence-based programs, um, treatment. But as defined by them. So it comes down to the Correct. local responsibility. Correct. Yep. Yep. So. If any of them, uh, you know, if, if any of the, the mayors of small towns or county commissions uh, would like to have conversation with me about it, I'm happy to, to assist. But, Tim, that, that list does not include potholes, does it? Potholes? Yeah. On no, sir. Okay, that's that's the point I'm trying to get at. So when the money goes, but it, it could at the whim or, of or the could it? Or could it? I I get it cannot. That's my question. I, I'm not aware of any kind of legal ramifications that a municipality or county would face if they use the money for things other than what is outlined in the MOU. However, that's that's the directive that's been given. Yes. Now, Matt, you talk about the, the, and they'll need to seek their own legal advice on on the appropriateness of what they spend on. That would just fall into the state auditor's duties when money is audited at the end of the year from their budgets sure, anyway? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, it's not, it's, we, there has to be separation from the private foundation mm -hmm. of telling municipalities and local governments how to spend their money. That, they'll need to go and seek that, what's appropriate on their own. Go ahead, John. There's kind of a throwaway line about the 3% for future litigation. Does that mean we have future litigation in play that we expect to hit the hit, that's, hit pharma bigger <laughs> hit him harder. i think i think one of the attorneys that was involved could better answer that question you know patrick morsey or or St stephen skinner could answer that better than i could if they anticipate well it's yeah three percent that's a lot of money given the the size of the uh the, I, the settlement there i'd have to look at the mou you know it's not a 
there, there might be um, uh, there might be some guardrails on how that can be spent. It's just not going to go into a slush fund. Uh, that wouldn't be agreed yeah. upon. So now, when you uh, there's there's been there's no veiled accusation here. Okay, that would just put it out there. But there's always been talk about administrative costs. That there's there's a tendency among school boards and some others to build really nice stuff and, and pay really high salaries and sort of get, get lost, I would argue, kind of lose their mission along the way at times. So when it comes to establishing an executive director and a staff and a building, and a, that's, that's a lot of potential administrative costs, right? So how, how do you, what's the mechanism by which you define how much is, is too much? I mean, executive director can cost 100 grand a year, it could cost 600 grand a year. It depends on how much executive director you want, right? Exactly. So what's the question again, John? Like, so how do you go about, what's the mechanism by which how much is the right number as opposed to too much? It's because you, you're creating we don't, out of we nothing, don't, we don't, right? So we are creating out of nothing. And we know that we have a punch list and we're working with our attorneys of things that we need to get accomplished next. And bringing an executive director in that has experience in foundation work will, will let us know the people on the board that ha don't have experience with a foundation this size of what our key personnel and where we need to keep our costs. Obviously, we, we're on the board. We want to keep the cost as low sure. as possible, but we still have to make sure everything's done legally. Uh, we have to make sure the money's accounted for. We have to make sure it's getting invested in the correct place. And investment, I mean, as far as investments to sustain the corpus of the fund, but also invested in the right areas in the state that we're going to get a, a return on that investment. So, uh, you know, we don't want to go and if an area has a lot of beds available, we don't want to go and invest in another uh, facility that's going to put more recovery beds in that mm -hmm. area. We want to put that money somewhere where they need the recovery beds. So th those are the things that we're looking at. And the board of which you're the chair would serve as the executive director's boss. They report to the board. Yes. Okay. Until this conversation, quite honestly, I didn't realize the enormity of, yeah. of what you're dealing with. Well, we, you're like the dog who caught the car, you know, right. now, well, now what do you I do? Mean, I, I, you know, I opened a bank account with $217 million. I got to sign off on that. And you know, it was, it does was, a teller have to call for the manager when that happens? <laughs> oh, like you don't know, Gil Strap. Come on. Listen, I, I was, I was hunting in a location undisclosed and I had to leave my hunting spot to go and get better internet to make sure that I sign, could docu sign some yeah. documents. It's, I was like, wow, this doesn't even seem real. It was, we, we took the money we put $50 million into, um, uh, like CDs and then an insured cash sweep, the, the remainder. It, it has a cap of $200 million. These are things that I had no idea about. Well, fortunately, you're in a room with two gentlemen who are used to handling those sums of money, and they can yeah. give you any advice on that you need to. I, I'm going to bring the conversation back to something more realistic <laughs> yeah, right now. That is not true, people. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Yeah. It's like, uh, if, if, if I may real quick, yeah. John, uh -huh. you, were, you were asking about administrative costs mm -hmm. and how those things can really add up. I can tell you that, that from the, the few times that the, the board has met, um, we, we lean in the direction of conservative when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, the salary of an executive director, we don't know where we're going to land there. I, you know, I, I know that we've been told by the attorneys that there are people that do this sort of work for very large salaries, but there's, there's, a, there's a range. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to office space and, and staff, we're going to lean in the direction of conservative. Um, none of us are about squandering any of this money. We're not about to put up an executive director in some palace somewhere. Um, we're going to find the most reasonable accommodations that are appropriate for the sort of work that needs to be accomplished. And I'm not suggesting yeah. otherwise, yeah. but yeah. you know there's going yeah. to be pushback. Whatever you yeah. whatever you choose, you're going to get harped at. Sure. For a any any decision we make is some will be critical of. Yeah. yeah. Tim, do you and face okay. any conflicts uh, with your day job in regards to grants that might be made by the board? Or would would your day job actually be benefiting from a grant from the board? I would suspect that, that my programs would be eligible to pursue some of the grant opportunities that, that may present in the future. Um, and I think if, if there were grant opportunities and if I ever wanted to pursue them, I would have to recruit, rec rec what's the word? Recuse, 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 recuse myself yeah, from yeah, those sorts yeah, of, yeah. but, but I believe, you know, I guess ultimately the board will be, a, you know, the, the final approver of, of, who's eligible and, and who's going to be uh, recipients of, of various grants. Um, so I, 
we'll see how that, that unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's an old adage, to get the job done right, you find the best people you can find to do the job. And I think you two are prime examples of the success of identifying the right people. You both are exceptionally credible and very smart, and you do a good job. Uh, we so, have a tremendous board as well. Yeah, and I, you're wow. the only two that I know yeah. off the board. But, credible. Uh, but, the, uh, uh, but until you get the executive director in place, the bulk of the work is going to fall upon you, your board, you and your board, and you already got full-time jobs. You're already very busy. What's the time frame, uh, going back to the question we've, we've alluded to a couple of so times, doing the job right and doing the job fast. What's going to be the time frame of hoping to get executive director on board? And you have about 30 seconds yeah. to answer that, by the way. Soon. <laughs> that's, that, that's a personnel issue. Yeah. And I, I don't want to get too far, yeah. go to, too far down that road, but we hope it's soon. Yeah. Matt and Tim, thanks uh, to both of you for coming in this morning. Very much appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Uh, Matt, thank you for the preparation of the, uh, the lunch that's about to be served here in the building. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>